Hello. All right. So, uh, hi, my name is Gabby Getz. Um, I lead development on CZMJS, our web 3D runtime. And as the talk title entails, I'm going to tell you about what's new and also what is upcoming in CZMJS. So, first things first, I wanted to start with kind of the reason we're all in a room together, which is really awesome and cool, um, is the amazing community that has supported CZMJS and CZM open source in general. Um, so being open source, we've been able to get contributions from all over the world. Um, I think we have over 13,000 stars on GitHub at this point, and I think we have over 13 million downloads. Um, and that's, Thanks to the amazing community here, um, everybody who's ever commented on a comment or posted on the forum, that has been part of you know, our growth, so thank you. Um, and then diving a little into what is new. So if you saw uh, the keynote this morning, some of this might be a little redundant, but we're gonna talk about it in a little bit more detail. So first things first, um, this was a, um, really happy to talk about this one because this was a big community request that we've had for a couple years now. And finally, as of June 1st, the release, uh, we have released draping imagery on 3D tiles. Um, so this gives us the ability to take raster imagery and drape it on top of data sets like Google Photorealistic 3D tiles. Um, in this case, this is um, Google's 2D map data. So this is their roadmap data and labels draped on top of their 3D tiles, um, which they also have a fully stylable, customizable API too, if you wanna try that out. Um, it's also very useful for um, augmenting existing data. Um, for example, this is an example of an uncolor uncolored point cloud of Mount St. Helens um, with Bing imagery, raster satellite imagery draped on top. Um, another like big use case for this would be um, we have an app uh, that uses CZMJS called Smart Construction, and they'll have job sites that they augment with higher quality ortho photos. So they have drone imagery that they've collected and um, use structure from motion to recreate a mesh and then they'll augment it with even higher quality ortho photos and more up to date ortho photos. Um, another use case for this would be to add analysis to your 3D tiles data sets. So this is again, Google Photorealistic 3D tiles. Um, but in this case, it's draped over with a population heat map um, raster layer that's provided by NASA. And this is quite similar to some of the analytic data sets that you might have seen this morning in the keynote. Um, I know there was recently a hackathon where they um, used Google analysis layers to showcase um, flood risk areas and draping that imagery on top of Google. So this really kind of grows the pie of what's possible um, when you're using 3D tiles as your global, uh, basically, terrain and building provider. We've also been doing a lot of work with volumetric and voxel data. Um, so in this case, this is an example of uh, time dynamic data coming from a company called Comspoc. And what they did is simulate a satellite breakup event. And this is volumetric data that shows um, the likelihood of there being debris at that point in space. Um, this is a simulated breakup, not a real breakup. Um, but it's uh, very crucial to understand where debris is in our atmosphere if you have some expensive assets in orbit, right? Um, so that's one instance of that. Um, when we are rendering voxels, um, we are using a draft extension to 3D tiles. And um, because we are doing um, a rendering technique involving uh, ray marching, we actually can do a lot of 
transparency effects and we can style at runtime. Um, so these are a few more examples of using voxels in different contexts. The first one is a underground data set from a company called Swiss Topo. Um, they work on a digital twin of the entirety of Switzerland and they deal a lot with ground composition data, which is um, the data set you see here. Um, so they've classified and put different uh, ground composition into different buckets. And then at the bottom we have an underwater use case. Um, this is using um, voxels to represent um, ocean temperature um, throughout the uh, ocean off the coast of the southern US. And because, like I mentioned, we are using techniques. Come on, go ahead, Nicole. Oh, no. Well, we can do a lot of things at runtime because we are taking that ray marching approach, including clipping, um, uh, shading, filtering, um, et cetera. I think this is good. Let's just go to the back. Oh, that's okay. Nicole? Oh, all right. All right. So then moving on to the next thing I wanted to talk about. We have done a lot recently to augment visual quality of CZMJS. So with um, a lot of work recently going into some of the native game engine plugins. Um, the development there has really set the standard for what visual quality of a 3D geospatial app looks like, right? Um, so we wanted to bring up, reach the same bar on the web, right? So um, on the left, we have um, an example of our OSM 3D buildings before some of the visual quality improvements we did and then on the right after. So what we did was focus a lot around things that would increase your understanding of the scene um, so you understand model form and can easily understand what your map is telling you, right? So the few of the things that went into that is one, we added a lot of support for GLTF PBR, which is physically based material, uh, next. Uh, extensions so that allows us to basically render a host of different material qualities including uh, improved metals, uh, improved reflections, things like that. Um, we also implemented Kronos's PBR neutral tone mapper um, which is a way of making sure colors are consistent across different runtime engines. So if you load a model in one area um, in CZMJS, or if you load it in another engine, such as say 3JS, if you're using the same uh, tone mapper, you'll see a lot more color consistency, which is great for portability. Um, we also did a lot around creating environment maps, dynamic environment maps uh, by default for um, increased uh, details in some of the reflections and more realistic reflections and that is building on some existing functionality we have around image-based lighting. Um, basically, uh, some techniques to make sure that our um, reflections are more dynamic and feel like more like part of the scene, right? Um, and then we also did a lot of work to improve um, our ambient occlusion post-processing. So what ambient occlusion does is allow you to kind of pick out the fine details of a mesh um, with a post-processing effect. So before things were a little bit rough, they also didn't scale very well, like it was very oriented towards a very specific scale, um, but we implemented a few techniques to make sure that scales to a variety of scenes and scenarios by default. And here's a quick image of, hey, building all these up from scratch with an untextured mesh, um, you can get some really cool and very realistic effects. So we also want to touch a little bit on what is coming down the pipe for the near future. Um, so one of the biggest things that we are working on is better feature data support. And when we say feature data, we're talking about point lines, polygons, um, things that are coming from uh, services like the OGC features API, um, such as this reality data is classified with AI 
and the AI basically pulled out road um, line work and terrain contour lines. So we want to be able to support really large data sets that have that feature data. Um, in one case, we are targeting something with um, over 100 million features. So we want to make sure that when we do that at runtime, everything is running smoothly and at like the 60 frames per second that you're used to. Um, we also have, this is another big community demanded one, um, we are adding back support for model instancing collection. So this is an API that allows you to render a model um, hundreds of thousands of times over the earth at different locations, um, very uh, without using as much memory, right? So instead of rendering each individual model, we basically render it once and then kind of do some uh, graphics magic to copy it around. So that's really good for, sorry, that's really good for like, um, think like crowd simulations or say like, I need to see every location of wind turbines over the entire earth. It's really good for cases like that. Another thing we are working on, um, there is a PR open for this right now, is multiple viewports. So CZM.js already supports, say you wanna show um, two viewers next to each other, but um, this would be multiple viewports sharing a WebGL context, which means we will uh, share m memory and other resources across the same scene. So here's an early example of that with a 3D tile set loaded in um, two different views right next to each other. This is really useful for, say, AEC um, architectural views where you need kind of a fine detail on one side, say in 2D or orthographic, and then you want your full res um, perspective view on the other. And then last but not least, we are also working on a Sandcastle 2.0. Um, so this is an early mock-up of what we are looking at there. Um, but basically, we want to build on the awesome Sandcastle that we have now and the amazing uh, functionality that that provides us, but make it more accessible and a little bit more up-to-date. So. We're looking at adding uh, Monica, which powers VS Code uh, for code editing. So that'll give more IntelliSense and autocomplete option. Um, it'll give us commands like you can format code. And then um, bringing up the look and feel um, using some existing Bentley components um, to, you know, more, more modern look and feel, right? Um, we're also looking at maybe adding additional tutorial-like content and additional options for sharing your examples. But the biggest thing is Sandcastle works really well for what we need it to do, so we wanna make sure we're you know, not breaking what already works for us. We're just augmenting that. And we would also like to hear from you. So we are very active on GitHub in the community forum. Um, if you go to community.cesium.com, um, please let us know what you would like to see. Um, and we are there listening and we love your input, so please let us know. <laughs> <laughs>